2018 in Friedrichshafen, Germany. We're happy to come to visit an old friend of mine for more years than either one of us care to admit at this point. Peter Funk is the proprietor of a company now making what I would call retro airplanes. And two years ago when I was here, I think that was the first year you showed the Correct. Clubman, I couldn't get near it for some hours. And even so, you were setting up the booth. You weren't even open yet, and I could hardly get near it to take pictures because so many people were attracted to this airplane. This is Clubman. So first, let me thank our sponsors in the USA, Bristol Aircraft USA and LSA Aero Marine. Thank you for your help in providing this video. So Peter, what gives the idea about retro airplanes? Where did this idea with the Clubman, how was it born? Uh, we are in this retro aircraft segment uh, since a couple of years now. Uh, it's uh, a part of our business. Uh, it became more and more important over the years. Uh, starting point for me, of course, was a private interest. Uh, I grew up uh, as a, uh, when I was a young boy, I was reading always the first 10 pages of any aviation book. So I had always an interest in something uh, which had more than one wing and so on. And uh, then I was, uh, from uh, the business side, I was uh, starting to compare a few years ago automotive industry. In, in, in Europe at least we have uh, in the automotive industry some good examples uh, of uh, very well known products which are sold in quantities today. Uh, it's retro cars like BMW is making the Mini, uh, Fiat ah, yeah. is producing the 500. Yeah. And yeah, there are some are others old designs actually. with very good success. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I did wonder, could we not do something similar in aviation? And there is an interest. They, I, 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 I spoke to many pilots and I found there is a basic, let's say, core in each of them, uh, which attracts uh, for historic aircraft. But now the question is, many pilots, uh, they probably don't want to act with old engines and with a lot of ah. difficulties to find parts and maintenance problems, blah, blah, blah. And that was the driving emotion to go into the retro segment. So what you've done is make old airplanes that are brand new. Yes. Uh, I mean, the, the, the most critical part always is the engine, the power plant. Yeah? Sure. Um, first, uh, so look at this one here, yes. It right. is uh, part of our business concept to use engines which are in production today. We don't want to play with uh, museums engines which have been undergoing any kind of a restoration because as a manufacturer we have to give the full liability and it's the customer who will call to us if there is a problem. <laughs> right. Right? So we need to have a manufacturer in our back who can give the support and the parts and so on. Uh, so that was for this project uh, starting point to say, hey, there is a sexy looking radial engine now available also in Europe. So this is the Werner. Yes. yes. Okay. It's a seven cylinder producing uh, 117 horsepower. And the, the airframe is not uh, an airframe which has an historic um, original uh, base. It's a, it's a, um, a reshaped kind of an FK9. So the FK9 we know very well. You've sold many of these over your career yeah, yeah. as B and F, yeah. which meant something else in those days. But now it means Booker and Funk. But you've used the name B and F for a long time. And FK9 it was the B and still FK9, still in production. and there's still lots yeah, of them, yeah. and still in production. So but the approach was to to use the, the the core of the FK9. It means the airframe, and try to reshape it on on the on the on, on the outer ends. It means the wing tips and the tail shape, ah, and see, okay. also there is the a different kind of, a, so of a front windscreen and so on, just to make it uh, a vintage-looking design. And in combination with this uh, vintage looking engine, you get something which is uh, in between these two worlds. It means it's giving you the flying and cruise comfort of a modern composite type aircraft, um, but it's uh, having the appearance of a 1930 style airplane. So, are you selling this airplane actively? Yes, yeah. we have uh, started with the first batch of 10. Okay. Um, of course, it is a development project, so we do not have a final type certificate here in Germany at the moment. We are running the, the flight test uh, program and uh, we are already preparing for the next uh, batch of, let's say, pre-serial aircraft. 
um, as you know, we are not just making one project. Yeah? Right. So for us, there is also kind of a limited capacity. In the last two years, we mostly concentrated on our biplane replicas and we just earned the type certificate. Oh, for you did for that one? Yes. For the yes, 135? Uh, just three days ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations. And, uh, it's very fresh then. Next thing now is the Clubman. Okay, because we great. have orders, there's people interested. and I'm sure, I'm we sure. Have, we were flying uh, up to 30 hours uh, at present uh, with it. Most of them, uh, most attention uh, was going into the engine. Into the How engine, is huh? it behaving? And we are, for example, just uh, uh, trying out the third uh, oil tank installation okay. and things like that. Yeah, uh, we had recorded uh, the basic uh, performance data. Yeah, the the flying characteristic. Let's start on that, and that is probably the most simple tail dragger I ever flew in my is that life. Right? Yeah. It has a lot to do with the landing gear. Uh, the, this landing gear has a huge suspension trouble. Uh -huh, um, okay. If you move the wings you can see it's pretty soft. Yeah. Uh -huh. I would like to compare that one maybe with a fuselage dork if that is known for yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. um, that plane is funny because you fly in for in 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 a, in a final and then on the ground near to the ground you just have to to lift the nose a little bit doesn't matter how much the wheels are touching the ground the plane is still flying yeah and you just have to wait until the <laughs> landing gear has uh, a certain uh, distance of the wheels and then the landing is completed <laughs> yeah it's really pretty easy flying tail dragger from the performance and, side. And so that gear is different than the original FK9. Yeah, it's a completely different, different gear. Yeah, yeah, it's a completely different yeah. gear. Yeah. It was, it was intended to be a kind of a, let's say, off-road uh, landing gear, and uh, the the plane can go from short fields. I mean, with a 117 horsepower um, and a total of a 600 kilo takeoff, and these large nearly two meter propeller um, you have quite good acceleration and uh, initial climb is at at least uh, uh, 1500 feet a minute wow well i think maybe we should go look at one of your other retro airplanes now peter and you can tell me about that one the the plane itself has been uh, designed coming from the 30s uh, it was uh, produced by a company Bucher. Uh, Bücher at that time was a main supplier for trainer aircrafts in Germany. Uh, for example, nearly all the World War II pilots, German pilots, uh, started their flying carriers right? on this type of aircraft. So the Jungmann uh, was becoming at that time the standard training aircraft. Um, I found out uh, over many years uh, that there is a certain fascination for these Buka aircraft. The, the, the Buka company uh, closed the doors on the end of the last days of World War II. Oh wow! Uh, but long still, long gone. Then, yeah, yes. it's the last uh, days in April '45. But still today, if you travel around the world and you talk to pilots, you can say out of ten pilots, uh, wherever you go, nine can tell you about the history of this Buka <laughs> aircraft, and I always see some gloss in their eyes. So that had attracted me a long time ago to buy just for myself uh, one of these Jungmann. Ah, okay. Yeah. The problem is there is not so many anymore existing. Out of the German production, which had been the original planes, there might be, I don't know, a handful flying today and you pay an, an amount of money which was beyond my budget. Okay. Uh, there is some uh, plane, uh, some Jungmann existing, which had been produced in license production. So uh, Spain oh. was running uh, this trainer production up to the mid of the 50 or end of the 50s. Um, but these aircraft are fitted with uh, different engines, which are n not pretty much known for the reliability and so on. So. To make it short, I, I wasn't able to find uh, to find the right plane uh, matching my needs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. And uh, I was dropping this idea to have some of these aircraft uh, for a while, and then I found uh, a publication uh, of the history of the of the Birka company and their trainer aircraft, and I found that it has started with a first series of a, of an A model, which used an 80 horsepower hit oh. engine at oh. that time. It was 1934. And uh, so far I know that uh, that hit engine has produced in a very similar version under a license in the Czech Republic. And to, for my surprise I found that this engine still today is in production. Really? It looks wow, the same. that's a long time later. Yeah. 
It's the same uh, kind of uh, design. It's an inline air-cooled hanging four-cylinder engine, uh, which is of course today modernized. So they have a uh, 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 they have a, um, a magnesium housing. Ah, so okay. they use the, the cylinders, for example, are coming from the Porsche 911 and things like that. But the basic uh, look and the basic design uh, guidelines have been kept. Yeah. So I said. If I can get an engine, this is the major point, uh, to make an airframe as an, as an experimental, just for me, that's not a big deal. So that's where we started some five years ago. Okay. After studying the documentation, uh, I found out that this old design, which uh, was the starting for the Jungmann, uh, had, does match our current regulation it, for the light aircraft. So it is more or less already what we are um, uh, let's say trying to, f to to get under the European light aircraft. Yeah. Now the interesting point is this: uh, Why did they use this small engine? Yeah. Uh, the reason is after World War One there was the contract of Versailles, and this contract was limiting aviation, and the intention was to have aviation, let's say, not military but only for private ah. purpose. And so the, 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 the usable power output of, of aviation engines has been limited. And this is why Bücher started with an 80 horsepower engine. They did what they had to do yeah. and made it work. And they made the engine. best out of it. And I can say, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, as a private pilot, I'm flying in a historical aer aero club. I'm flying Stearmans, Tiger Moss, uh, whatever. I have a, a private, I have a Stampe, which was also a trainer aircraft from the French Air Force, uh, World War II. Out of all of them, the, the, the Bücher is, let's say, the Stradivari under the B plates. Uh -huh, okay. yeah, it's, the, it's, it's, it's more behaving like a sports car, like a modern glider. Yeah? You move the stick just a bit and the plane goes. Uh, on top, the plane is not really nervous. It's not sensitive, oversensitive, oh, nice it's not a challenge then. to fly it, but it's agile. And that is, from my understanding, this fascination which is still existing today. That's the look you pilots. see in the eyes when yeah. you talk to them about yeah. this airplane. Yeah. It's just a sweet flying airplane that also is not sensitive to your inputs. Yeah. So now you're offering this airplane in kit form, do I understand that correctly? So that someone can build it themselves? Correct. The, okay. the first batch of 10 had been sold uh, just ready to fly. And why we are manufacturing both in Czech and in Poland. Okay. Uh, I simply had to increase capacities. <laughs> yeah, so, and what you didn't know, and you had to find a new it, way to do it. It was not the plan, not the initial plan. Out of ten, we we sell eight as a, a ready to fly and ah, two okay. as a kit. Okay. And in other some other countries, I suppose it's just easier to sell them a kit. Yes. Yeah. So it like depends on regulation system, and some people want to go for other engines and so on. So I'm a little torn, Peter, because I'm not quite sure what to call these. Are they replica or are they reproduction? We call them retro. The small parts uh, in our retro aircraft are looking a bit different from the original ones. And that will allow us to use more modern technologies uh, in production. For example, there is a lot of uh, water jet cutted brackets in our wings and so mm. on. Uh, whereas the original design had been using uh, fine, uh, thin uh, metal shield, metal sheet welded brackets, oh, yeah. which consume unbelievable amount of time in production. For us, it's clear we do not like to have the plane uh, looking different at the end. Uh, the, 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 the clear requirement is if it's standing there on the ramp between two original ones, you shouldn't be able to identify <laughs> who okay. is who. Yeah. So when I look at this, and then when I think about the kit. Um, the effort for a builder who says, okay, I, I want to build this, this airplane or another airplane of your flock here, how much build time are we talking about? The plane is coming out of the kit more or less like that. It means you have all the parts. We have a kit in the box over there. We okay. may have a look later. Um, we have two levels of kits. Uh, there is a basic kit. Where, for example, there is uh, wing spars ready. Uh, there is the, the all the, the ribs are produced, yeah. But ribs are not uh, fixed on the spar. Yeah? This ah, is okay. the basic kit. But the fuselage comes with the primer on. All the welding's done. There is no need to end make any, uh, let's say, critical uh, uh, work. Um, 
we have an advanced kit which is uh, just requiring you to install the control system which is also coming ready with a primer on uh -huh. uh, put the, 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 the leading edge on and the trading edge on and you can go uh, and cover it yeah. now that we're standing in front of this one that kind of looks like the young man over there but the difference is this only has one seat this is the young Meister you said yeah so what's the difference here the young Meister has been and is still today uh, the single seat full acrobatic version of the young man ah, okay the young man has been uh, designed as a trainer aircraft the young Meister has been designed as a advanced trainer at the time and that one was famous it had been used in aerobatic competitions up to the mid of 60s or oh, even really? later wow. just to the point where the first pizzas came into competition uh, these aircraft had been always on the top list of the aerobatic competitions worldwide in well it makes some sense since you talked about how light its handling is and how good its performance was once they got past the 80 horsepower engine anyway and well therefore that would lead someone to decide I want to go upside down in it or something. Yeah, but this engine is uh, putting much more horses to the propeller. Uh, the original plane had an output uh, with the SH-14 engine of uh, 160 horsepower, whereas this engine we use today from uh, Werner in uh, Czech Republic is uh, producing 140. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, uh, yeah, for a single-seat airplane, I'm thinking that would give this some pretty stupendous performance, right? Yes, but also the power to weight ratio is uh, is nearly exactly the same because our uh. our aircraft today is a bit lighter than the one uh, from the past. Uh, okay, okay. And it gives you probably really the same performance like the original plane. Beautiful. Well, you know, I think uh, we've covered this pretty thoroughly. People will always want more information, however, and we want to help them get it. Where do we find you on the web, Peter, so they can inquire more about the products? We have a company. website, uh, unfortunately in German, Yeah, it will be converted into English soon, including our web address. This moment it's www.bookerandfunk.de. Okay, and you also have another one that relates to FK, yes, why don't you give us that for one our, as well? For our common uh, customers for flying FK9s and so on, we have the www.fk-servicecenter.com. Okay, very good, Peter. I followed Peter's work, as I said at the beginning of this video, for many years, and I've got coverage on many of his airplanes over those years. You can find that in all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. We, again, we thank our sponsors, Bristol Aircraft USA and LSA Aero Marine. Thanks for joining Peter Funk and myself here at Aero 2018.